So can you change your PhD supervisor? And that's what I want to talk about today. So if you don't know me, I'm Professor Dave Maslach. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship. And I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There are so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out as much as I possibly can. So can you actually change your PhD supervisor? Absolutely, you can do that. And it's probably encouraged if you are having strong considerations in terms of changing, if you're feeling unhappy with your PhD supervisor, you should never feel locked in with anybody or anything. I think that that is kind of a bad mindset and that's kind of a troubling mindset to feel like that at any moment of your career or your life. If you feel like you're locked in and it's not good, then you should really, really consider changing uh, in terms of what you should do. You should never feel like that. That is kind of probably some sort of weird power trip that's going on. And it is a bad signal of where things are gonna go. And you need to look out for you in terms of how you feel about yourself and what you're gonna do in your own career. You really do need to look out for you. Nobody else is gonna look out for you. And it's kind of a lesson that we all learn as we grow and develop, not only in this career, but in all careers, you have to really watch out for yourself. But I'm not saying, you know, be mean and aggressive and, and tackle people and, and, you know, kind of do that doggy dog stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, you need to look out for your own sanity and yourself. So um, when might you actually consider changing your supervisor and where, when, when is a good signal in terms of when you should do that? And these are all good signals. What I'm gonna do is sort of give you some good signals in terms of when you should change and then give you some not so good signals in, um, in when you should not change. So if you feel like you're in an abusive relationship or abusive situation, and there's lots of that that goes on in academia, you need to change. You really, really need to change. That is not a good situation. And you need to first talk to, maybe it's a senior supervisor or senior um, person in, in the department. And if that doesn't work out, go talk to adjacent department or somebody else in that you can trust, a trusted mentor, and then get their insights in terms of uh, what you should do. And, but generally it is, you know, it's not a good thing if you feel abused and whatever, and you're getting like mean and hateful things and you're really feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Um, that's not how you should feel. You should feel actually this is kind of fun and you're enjoying it. And it is, you know, it should be hard. I, I need to sort of clarify that. It should be really hard and it should be kind of like, man, this is really tough and, and I don't know how to do this kind of stuff. But if they're not helping you and they're not doing it nicely and politely, I think that that is a, a signal of something that's going on. You also need to think about changing if you no longer feel interested in a research interest, right? If you're just kind of like, I'm done. I don't want to do this thing anymore that's a signal that you probably should consider changing or looking for something else. Um, if you are close to finishing, you know, if you're in your third year and you have another year left or your fourth year and you've got another year left in terms of finishing, then just finish the darn thing and get through, you know, persevere. Nobody's getting, nobody feels like they actually like doing it at that moment. So don't kind of like switch around and stuff too quickly, but just kind of get it done and then you can switch to a different thing after it. Um, if you no longer, um, if, if your supervisor is not pushing you to do well and not really trying to advance who you are and in the interest and, and the research and stuff, then that's probably a good sign that they're kind of moved on to other things and you might want to consider sort of switching to something. And, and usually, you know, if that happens, it's usually they've pulled back and they're devoted to other things or that they are, you know, that they there's something that's going on in the relationship and they're just like, I don't want to deal with this anymore and I'm not going to really try. Um, and so you need to sort of think about what that means and what you are doing in terms of what is um, what is driving that and really think about what is going on. If you have family situations that are leading you to move to a different place and that happens for a lot of people, and then it's okay to move to, to a different, um, you know, supervisor. So if you live in Oregon right now and you need to move to France because your, 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 um, 
you know, your husband has got a job in France, well, then, then do it. I mean, that you shouldn't be held back. You probably will have to take in extra courses once you get there, um, you know, to get brushed up in terms of what they're doing, but that is totally fine and legitimate, and you have to think about what that is, right? Um, and then you just communicate to your supervisor and say, hey, I, I need to make this family move. Maybe they might work through that. If they're a good supervisor, they might work through that, but, um, you know, if they're also a good supervisor, they might say, hey, I've got this friend in France, um, let me hook you up and see if we can negotiate something there and you can go work with them. And that's the way you should think about it. It's like a career, right? You're looking to make everybody better off and that's the way that you should think about it in terms of making people feel better off. So when should you actually not change and what is, you know, why, what are bad things to change? When you're kind of chasing prestige or chasing the next best thing, and everybody knows that that's going on. It is very clear when that's going on and you have to be very careful about chasing that prestige and chasing, you know, the next best thing. Um, everybody can see through that. So don't do that. But I mean, it's not gonna, I can say not to do that, but you're still gonna do it anyways if you're that kind of person. So um, just know that everybody can see what you're doing and it's very transactional when you're doing that. So the last thing is if you've got uh, you know more money from some other advisor, money's not the end goal. If you get that money, it could be, you know, they might not be nice people. Um, and you have to really think about that. The nice people part of it is so, so important in terms of your life and how you feel and where you're going. Uh, you really, really think about that in terms of the money is not the target. Your, how you feel and your happiness and what's going on in your life and feeling like you actually are just, this is kind of fun. And, you know, you got to bounce in your step. That's what you want. It's not the money. And I know that lots of people are going to be like, ah, I don't believe in this guy. It's, trust me, that it's so important. And you will, you will, you'll know when that's happened. Um, and, and you have to be very clear uh, that you are not just about the money. Uh, when you're doing that. So with that, give me a thumbs up, do subscribe to YouTube channel, and take care and have a wonderful day and good luck with everything. I know that you can do this.